Good afternoon, everybody. Shavua Tov. I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land, where you join me every Monday to Thursday for your top stories making headlines in Israel. Because many of you tell me quite accurately, you don't always get the news as it is happening uh, in Israel on the mainstream media. So we're here, happy to oblige, and we are on day 122 of Israel's war with Hamas. Of course, we don't forget how this war started with the brutal and depraved attacks of the 7th of October, which saw over 3,000 Hamas terrorists infiltrate Israeli territory and commit, commit acts of horrific atrocity, including burning people alive, murdering people, raping them, mutilating them, and taking people hostage in Gaza. It is also very important to note that the victims of the 710 atrocities weren't all Jewish and weren't all Israeli, many of them foreign nationals as well. So let's take a look at what has transpired over the weekend and we begin with the hostage deal. Everybody is waiting with bated breath to find out uh, what both sides have agreed to in order to release the over 130 hostages that are still being held inside the Gaza Strip. Now, as you can see, I'm dressed up uh, warmly. We are very concerned for the situation in the Gaza Strip, not just for our hostages, also for civilians. I'm going to get to that humanitarian aid in, in a second, but first let's talk about the deal. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said he will not accept any kind of deal. He won't be pressured into any kind of deal that potentially harms Israel and reiterated the goals are not to fight the people of Gaza, but the goals of this war are to completely eliminate Hamas and to see the return of our hostages. Uh, Israel has accepted the terms of the current agreement, and this is the second uh, uh, agreement that Israel has accepted. The previous one, Hamas rejected. So for all of those out there who are calling for a ceasefire, let it be known Hamas have rejected the first uh, ceasefire agreement. They want the withdrawal of all IDF troops from the Gaza Strip. Uh, something that is unlikely to happen until we get all our hostages back and have said that they are busy studying the current agreement. There have been rumors of uh, discord between Ismail Haniye and Yehia Sinwa. Meanwhile, the humanitarian aid continues to go into the Gaza Strip. Uh, as of yesterday, the International Public Diplomacy Directorate, along with COGAT, the unit responsible for ensuring the safe transfer of goods, reports 11,000 trucks with medicine, food supplies, uh, shelter, uh, uh, water have all gone through into the Strip. Israel saying at least 23,000 tents to provide shelter have gone into the Strip uh, within the last couple of months. Uh, the army reporting that 17 out of 24 Hamas battalions have been destroyed and the army continues to push through Khan Yunus and dismantling those horrific terror tunnels underneath the ground yesterday, a tunnel was uh, excavated that contained an elevator shaft. It, it just, again, the mind boggles. The mind absolutely boggles the billions of dollars of aid money, your taxpayer money, that has gone to, to funding the Gaza Strip with the intention of helping the people of Gaza, but really just building a subterranean tunnel metro. Closer to home is Itamar ben Gavir, the leader of the Otsme Yehudit party, becoming a massive headache for the Prime Minister. And the answer seems to be yes. Ben Gavir gave an interview to the Wall Street Journal who referred to him as that Ill, the man in the ill-fitting jacket, where he heavily criticized the Biden administration, saying that the Biden administration sending in humanitarian aid and pressing on the humanitarian issues is a de facto support for Hamas. 
And this has with uh, this has resulted in widespread condemnation inside Israel, including by the Prime Minister who admonished Ben Gavir, saying that we thank our greatest ally, the United States, for all their aid, and leaders of the opposition, Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid, roundly condemning Ben Gavir's statements. And I want to uh, just talk a minute about the Biden administration. Um, I know that everybody has an opinion on President Biden and his administration. Some are pro, some are against, uh, and that's fine. But throughout this war, one thing we cannot deny is that the United States, regardless of criticisms, regardless of disagreements, and yes, friends have disagreements, the United States has stood strongly and resolutely with the state of Israel, the, the president himself flying out in, in that first week uh, to be a wartime president, to stand by Israel's side. Uh, the president also signing in increased aid to Israel to help us. Yes, he signed through aid to Ukraine as well, but aid coming through to, to Israel. So uh, I think when it comes to issues like the conflict, like the war, we always have to apply critical thinking and not partisanship. Uh, very, very important. And and just from an Israeli perspective, and certainly my perspective and many in the country, uh, while we are still deeply, deeply mired in our grief of what happened here and still trying to come to terms with the unthinkable, we do care. We care very deeply about the people of Gaza, the innocent people of Gaza who are enduring a humanitarian disaster. And in the couple of the last couple of weeks, we've been speaking a lot about UNRWA. That's the United Nations Relief Works Agency, and their uh, uh, slow but sure defunding. Well, Spain is one of the exceptions. Uh, they have agreed to give three million dollars of funding to UNRWA. Most countries, with the exception of a few, have frozen their funding pending an investigation into how UNRWA is run. And for those who are concerned that if uh, UNRWA shuts down, there won't be any way of getting humanitarian aid into Gaza. There are many other aid aid agencies on the ground that will be able to disseminate that aid. Speaking of the United Nations, the UN Special Envoy on Sexual Violence has been in the country for the last week. She arrived last week, went down to the south, met with some of the families of the hostages, some of the survivors, and met with survivors of the horrific, horrific uh, uh, sexual abuse, as well as our witnesses. Yes, there are survivors. So for anybody wanting to deny these events took place, that is not only reprehensible, but there are also survivors to bear witness. And she spoke about how she has not slept for a week. She says the things she has seen and heard, she says the world outside of Israel does not fully understand the magnitude, the magnitude of the crimes of sexual violence against humanity that were uh, inflicted on um, Israeli women and girls and some young men, we understand. She says uh, she implores um, uh, survivors to, to to speak about it, uh, despite how difficult it is saying that these criminals cannot be allowed to get away with it and not speaking about it allows them to get away with it. It is just beyond our, our comprehension. This is the biggest case of sexual violence uh, in Israel throughout our history. And if you consider yourself a feminist, if you consider yourself part of a women's organization and you have not spoken up for Israeli women because there are Israeli women victims, shame on you. Shame on you. You are a failure as a feminist and a female organization. Strong females showing their presence last night at the Grammy Awards. Morgan Tucker, a singer and an influencer on Instagram, wore a dress with a yellow ribbon with the sign, bring them home, uh, a message to all the world. And we thank the president of the uh, Academy, uh, of the Grammy Academy, for paying tribute to those murdered at the Nova Festival. Someone not shining her great big light was uh, Annie Lennox, former frontwoman of the band Eurythmics, calling for a ceasefire. Well, Annie... 
We know you mean well, but really this performative virtue signaling has to stop. You did not mention the hostages. You did not acknowledge the atrocities of the 7th of October. Sit down and stick to singing. And finally, my favorite story of the week was the opening of the Indigenous People's Embassy last week in our Indigenous and Eternal Capital, the city of Jerusalem, attended by members of the, uh, the, the Khoi, the Maori, the Aboriginal people, Native Americans. It was absolutely spectacular to see the images from one Indigenous people to another Indigenous people. Thank you. And we can't wait for everybody uh, to, to visit the embassy. Very, very moving images and uh, incredible messages of solidarity as the representatives from their various uh, tribes and people have uh, visited the, the South and met with the families to express their solidarity. That's the end of today's edition of the Israel Brief, the first one of the week. Don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our YouTube channel is at the Israel Brief. Guys, if you like our content, please subscribe, share, like, invite. I don't know what else you need to do, but do it. Uh, we're on Facebook at Lottle Site. We look like that at L-O-T-L-S-I-T-E. And we're on X at Lay of the Land 5. Guys, uh, that's it for me for today. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you with those headlines tomorrow.